So my little talk today is going to be about how um, how we've set up the new website and how you guys can get involved if you want to, guys and girls, of course, if you want to uh, get involved on in the website. So we just recently launched a new website, if you weren't aware. Uh, here it is. It looks really cool. You can't really see it on the screen, uh, but you can go to ccsf.edu forward slash coders uh, if you weren't already aware of our website. And it's really cool. Uh, William and Kevin, who are both not here right now, did a really excellent job designing it and making sure it worked. Um, but we launched it a little bit early, and so there's not everything is not totally done with it, though it is excellent in every other way. Um, so we've set up a GitHub repository. Uh, for everyone who went to the Saturday workshop, you guys should know how to do all of this and know how to work around this. Uh, GitHub's really cool if you haven't used it before. It's like a place for uh, coders to put their code online so other people can look at it, see it, download it, and then modify it, and then submit their changes to it. So we have this whole big repo, and it has a really nice readme to get involved. Um, so you can go read through that, but I'll run through it quickly. Uh, and then, so this is where the code is. And you can find this at William R. Myers' uh, GitHub account. But we also have a Trello where we like organize stuff and uh, keep up with like all the features we want to have and what we're doing and what's already done. Um, so it's really cool to get started. It's really nice. I'm actually pretty happy with this. I just recently um, set this up a couple days ago, or maybe yeah, a couple days ago actually. Um, I also use Vagrant um, as a solution. So the problem was was we're hosting the website on Hills, which is the college's um, network they have here. But when you go to develop the website that we put on there it would be really annoying for me, Kevin and William, and whoever else who wants to get involved to all be using and coding off of the same files. right? If we were all directly coding on the Hills network, then we would be overwriting each other's files, we'd be causing errors. People, when they go to on the website, if I'm working on it, are going to be constantly seeing like updates happen on their screen all the time. Um, mm -hmm. So the idea is, is that you want to develop locally, and then when you're done, push it onto the production environment or push it so that it's real, that people, when they go on the website, they actually see it. Um, but the problem is, is that when you go to work with these files, um, A, we use PHP, which you have to have a web server to actually use. That's semi-true. And what's really true is that your computer is not the same as Hill's. So sometimes things work on your computer when you're developing, like hacking away on stuff. Uh, but then when you go to put them on Hill's, it won't work all of a sudden. And then you have to like fix it really fast, otherwise people are going to like see a whole bunch of errors on the screen when they go to the website. Um, so one way to manage that is I've, used, I've made a Vagrant file um, and used Vagrant. So anyone who has and goes and installs this program called Vagrant can in one line uh, on, in their console type, uh, after downloading the GitHub repo, they can type Vagrant up, and then they will have a virtual machine installed, configured, and then run that has everything you need to, to pretend like you're coding on hills. So it's really cool. So what you kind of end up getting to do, um, let's see if I can't drag my console so you guys can kind of see what that's like. Um, uh, da, da, da. Well, what you would have to do I've already got it running, and then I deleted it and got some other stuff done. Um, but what you would have to do is, like, if this is your console, uh, this is the repo I have that I've downloaded uh, off of that website that I showed you, that GitHub repository. So after downloading it, I could just type one simple command, vagrant up, like Jason just showed us. And then you would have, after it's all done, you'd have another computer installed on your computer that's running a web server that's just like Hills. Um, so it's pretty cool. So what you, the, the payoff of that, if that's maybe too abstract, is you end up with a little web server on your computer that looks just like this. So you'll notice that the, the URL for the real website is ccsf.edu forward slash coders, and this is real. Anyone can do this and like hit that website and they'll see this. But over here, what I've done is you see the exact same thing because you just ran Vagrant and you just installed a computer that's configured exactly like Bill's is that serves the, the web content. <laughs> so it serves the website. So here you can see localhost 6969 is the, the port that I'm running the web server off of. Um, so it's pretty cool. So now you can go and make changes here. Um, I think I have Sublime up, my text editor. So you can see here, ignoring 
kind of the other files, you can see we have an index.html, and it's doing stuff, and that's reflected back on the website. So it's pretty cool. So like, for example, this is the local website. So let's say I wanted to change some stuff. I wanted to just totally break the website. Let's see if that works. Uh, if I wanted to totally break the website. No. Ah, oh, jeez, what's happening? Here we go. Here it is. So this should totally break the website. Ah, oh, it didn't totally break the website. But it should have. It should have totally screwed everything up. Oh, you know why? Because. Oh, it still worked. It's resilient. Yeah, it's resilient. <laughs> we have made really good code, apparently. Um, but that should have totally broken the website. Maybe what if I change stuff in here? Delete everything. Deleting everything should do something. There we go. OK, so I totally broke the website, this local website I have. But the real website is still OK. And that's excellent. Because now you can go and feel free to just like break things, make, mess things up, and then it'll still work. So that's really cool. So that's one feature that's kind of cool to get to work on this is you get this like environment that's already set up and so you can just begin coding. You can go onto the Trello account and just see what you would like to work on and what you think could be fixed. Or you just use the website a lot and you're like, God, this website sucks and you want to start working on it. Um, we have everything set up for you. It's a little bit of PHP, but we've included a ton of documentation like you can see here, just in all various ways. We also have a super freaking long readme that I probably spent like an hour long to try and get you like up to speed on what's happening and how it's all working. Um, and it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty straightforward if you take a look at it. Um, another thing that I was really proud of that I also wanted to take a second to talk about because I thought it was really cool was um, I used PHP as a simple like glue between web pages. Um, this solved the problem before in the old website, as excellent as it was. It, when I wanted to go update meeting times, for example, we had this little sidebar widget that would show you the meeting times. Well, we had like 12 web pages or so, and all of them had this little meeting time sidebar, but when I went to go update the meeting times, I had to go update them on 12 different files. And it was super slow and painful, and it had to be done every semester. So using the simplest way I could come up with to fix that problem, I really just wanted to edit one file and have it update everywhere that there's meeting times that need to be displayed. I wanted to edit one file and have that kind of go out to all the other web pages. So, the way I did that was just using some simple PHP, so it's really cool. Um, I have this, I created, I, this is kind of this pa pattern going on uh, that you might even call design pattern, though it's so simple. Maybe design pattern is too big of a word, but um, the idea is that you have templates that you build out of partials. So partials being smaller files. So for example, the partials folder is huge. There's like a ton of different stuff. Um, one of them being like header.php. So you can see here we set the title, we like do a, just a bunch of stuff that you would want at the top of all of your pages. And then in my uh, index.php, my template index.php, I just require that file. And then ta-da, you get to see it. Um, and so kind of what PHP does, we can actually, uh, it's kind of neat, I think. Um, what you can kind of do, let me fix the web page real fast. What's happening? Um, what you can do. Because when you go to, so here's the website, I, fit, I put it back so it's all fixed. And when you actually go to look at the code for the website, which popped up on the wrong screen, when you actually to look at the code of the website, you can see here in the, what's being served is a collection of smaller templates. So we can see here, begin header.php. And you can see here that it ends down here, down at the head. So it's kind of cool. So you get like the template ends up being like this big file that's made up of smaller files. So it's really nice. So now when you go to update meeting times, it updates everywhere on the website. Super cool. So you guys should get involved. There's a lot of stuff to do with the website, big and small. We have big ideas and small ideas. So if anyone wants to sharpen their skills or contribute to a real open source project and buff their GitHub profile with more commits, this is an easy way to do it. <coughs> and that's all I have to say. Thank you.